This is called the season of hunkering down. By the 1st of October, the aspens are done showing off for the year. First dusting of snow on the peaks, then first dusting of snow on the pasture. The color is almost gone and with it the tourists. My neighbors from the Soured Ranch have moved into town for the winter. For the next seven months, I'll be the last occupied house on my road. The horses hang around the corral looking a little grim. They know what's coming. I've all but missed this year's color change in the high country. So even though there's much to be done to prepare for winter, this morning Fenton, William and I take a hike up to Phoenix Park, one of the most wind protected places in the valley. Hoping to find a few groves of aspens still holding their leaves. We climb for an hour in light drizzle and under my boot soles is a carpet of green and gold. We surprise a mule deer buck, a four pointer, at the place where the forest gives way to meadow. When we reach the waterfall at the top of the park, the sun peeks through the clouds just long enough to turn the whole scene Kodachrome. The heavy gunmetal sky, the ghost aspens with only a fraction of their leaves left glowing like a fluorescent pencil sketch beneath it, the water tumbling down the face of the cliff, beads of it lit up against the dark rock and spinning earthward like fireflies. In the summertime, this trail sees a fair amount of use from hikers and horsemen, sometimes four wheelers and even the occasional four by four truck. But summer feels long over and we are between hunting seasons. So the dogs and I have the place to ourselves. Years ago on an August hike, right at the tail end of the monsoon, I got caught in a thunderstorm halfway across the big meadow that leads to Phoenix Park. I was new to the valley and had not yet learned how a bright white micro puff in one corner of the sky can morph into a cumulonimbic monster in the amount of time it takes to go around a couple of bends in the trail. If you have never gotten caught in a thunderstorm at high altitude, if you have never felt your long straight hair stand on end as if someone above you has strings attached to it, if you have never smelled sulfur in the air just before a crack you can feel at the center of your rib cage splits the sky in two, if you have never run between lightning bolts that are hitting the ground on every side of you, your brain racing to determine whether you will improve or diminish your odds of surviving if you take five seconds to unbuckle your pack and throw its contents, including your stainless steel water bottle to the ground, then you might not understand what a pleasure it is to hike that same trail in October on a cool dry day when the odds of a thunderstorm, while not impossible, are about 10,000 to one. After a snack and a long drink out of that same time-tested steel water bottle, the dogs and I make our way back down the trail smelling not sulfur, but the slow rot of dying leaves in a dry climate and the occasional tang of pine pitch. An immature bald eagle rides a thermal down canyon and it's windless enough that I can hear sun warmed rocks, newly freed from last night's frost, slip and settle in the big scree field across the creek that rises up toward Wasson Park. 